Hey everyone, welcome back. Now it's time to get started on texturing. Last time we were here, we edited mesh maps and got everything set up. There's a couple of things we need to do here prior to getting started. Uh, I'd watched the end of the last video for importing the new model with both nails facing the right direction and assigning the material. Next, we want to do is come over to the main camera. You can click it here or you can click it up here. It'll give you a drop down of all of the stuff. Uh, the first thing I want to edit is you can edit the uh, FOV field of view or the millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this to 55. The human eye sees right around that, so it kind of flattens it. You can see if we go down to like 5 and zoom in, it gives you like a fisheye lens. Like this is really close and that's really far. And if we went to like 100, it makes it extremely flat. So it flattens the object out, gets rid of the space. Uh, so 55 is usually what we see, so that's a good place to start. As we come down, um, you need to come down to tone mapping, and instead of linear, go to hydral. It'll be a little darker, but that's what we are shooting for. The next thing that we want to do, uh, just bring to your attention, is render. We will be shifting between it, which will be ray tracing. Uh, ray tracing is just how shadows and light bounces are calculated. Most video games use this rasterize uh, rendering, um, which is how, like if we want an ambient occlusion or uh, reflections calculated down here, you can hover and it'll give you, it says applies to raster renders only. The final render here will be in ray, uh, using ray tracing. The downside to ray tracing is, as you see, it's fuzzy and it takes a second to clarify depending on how powerful your computer is. So we will be shifting this on and off as we go through. Um, I upped the bounces from uh, one to four. Transmission can stay four. Uh, the bounces is how much light bounces, um, the number of indirect light bounces, and then transmission is how it uh, light bounces uh, to trace through. Uh, let's say more transmissive or transparent objects. So that'll be helpful when we have trans like semi-translucent uh, skin on the wings. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do, let me go ahead and turn off uh, raster re uh, uh, ray tracing right now. Just make it easier for us. You can see we have the normal map and how light is interacting. Um, down here in the cavity map, you can see that the specular cavity is actually adjusting how light is interacting with the cavities so it's blocking out that reflection uh, that roughness uh, in the cavity which is great it makes it look good but something i like to do with creatures is i like to adjust the surface a little bit so if you come up here to normal under surface hit the drop down it's like detail normal it will now give us a detail normal which is something that it'll blend and overlay with the normal map i am going to provide this micro normal. So go ahead and drag in the detail normal. You can see that it is just jumbled up this character pretty bad. And that's because of the scaling. So let's go ahead and tile it. And you can see now we're starting to get that texture break up on there. And this just does a good job at breaking up the light on top of the... So if you look here, it just does a good job at breaking up the light off of the sculpt. So I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to go ahead, you can turn it off, just turn it on just a little bit, okay? Um, we're going to turn this on and off at the moment. I'm going to keep it off, but it's just good to know and understand. Now we're ready to start texturing. So this video is going to be all about establishing a base to start from. So we are going to put a base material on and establish base roughness and base subsurface scattering. We are also going to uh, establish gradients, which will help us with this entire character and some major like hand-painted masked areas for just texture edits and as well as masking everything out. So first thing we want to do is come up here to texture, click texture. It's going to bring us into our, uh, into our texture settings. Sometimes these will be collapsed. So all you have to do, if that's the case, if these are collapsed, is hit these little arrows and then it should look like this, okay? You can go from materials to layers and then you should have your texture project. Click that and it'll open up. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we need a base material. So I'm going to go ahead and click materials down here. I'm going to go ahead and type in skin. And you don't have to do it. It's just easy and it's quick. I'm going to type in skin heavy acne and drag it over. Now you can see that it has applied to everything, including the teeth. Because um, the material is on all three of these uh, meshes. 
So what we need to do is separate it to make our workflow a little easier. So the first thing we're going to do is come over here to layers and then click this folder icon. Right click the folder icon. We're going to add a mask and we're going to add a black mask. A black mask, anything that's black in the mask will block out. Anything that's white in the mask will let through. So the first thing we're going to do is up here, this already selected this paint layer. We're going to come up here and this is an input processor. We're going to click that and we're going to choose color selection. And the source is going to be material ID. That is what we baked down here. And that's why we chose different poly groups for the materials in the high poly. So what I'm going to do is click add new. And then the ID map, which we baked out, is now here. So what I need to do is just select one. Click. Boom. And now you can see this folder, which houses all the textures we're going to create for the skin, is now housed inside that. And it's not affecting the claws or the teeth. Uh, we will eventually make teeth and claw folders as well. But for now, we are good. Let's go ahead and call this the body. Perfect. And let's go ahead and shrink that down. Now we are in acne. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off subsurface scattering because we don't want that to be adjusted. We will add our own subsurface scatter layer. We can do that right now. Add a new layer. Oh, no, nope, that's not what I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and hit back, back. There we go. Cool. So I'm going to select this and then add a new layer. Oh, no. Why are we... Sorry, sometimes Marmoset will act a little weird for you. So it's just important to understand what we're doing here. There we go. So for some reason, it wouldn't unselect this. So it was putting a new fill layer on top of this mask. So it was just blocking it out. So with this fill layer, I just want to adjust uh, subsurface scattering. So I can unclick these or I can just Alt, hold Alt, and then click scatter. And that's just going to give us... Uh, a base scatter which is one for now which is perfect and that's all we need so let's go ahead and turn this to white so we get some black no scatter white has scatter so now it's a white we will eventually edit this um, and I'll show you how to um, edit this later but for now that works so let's call this scatter uh, let's go back into our skin acne heavy let's go into our roughness and work that's okay for now I might turn it down just a little Or turn it up just a little rough this map there we go and that'll come into play later we'll be adjusting all of this stuff later perfect now what we want to do is now we have a base skin it doesn't look too good now but it will i promise uh the first thing we want to do is just establish some gradients okay so in here i'm going to click a new fill layer i'm going to alt and select just albedo this is just going to be color and we're going to call this a top down gradient this will be on top of the stack on top of everything we can actually if we want drag this outside of here and it'll encompass everything so uh, we can let's say close this down let's drag this out right click mask black mask now it's gone uh, next thing we're already selected in this paint layer you want to come up to this processor that's not what we want let's go one more and let's go with a gradient so now the gradient will come we have different selections here so right now we are at a top down gradient we can invert it if you want with this little button or hit negative here so that'll be a bottom that'll be a top so right now we're on a top down gradient which is exactly what we want we can adjust the intensity we can also adjust how we want it do we want a mid do we want radial top down is perfect okay and this looks good. So this will be our top down gradient. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the blending mode to overlay, which will just kind of give a little bit. And then we're gonna turn this down way down low. We just want it to barely affect, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. Close this. And I'm gonna call this a bottom up gradient. Up, up we already got gradient, cool. And I'm just going to select this. I'm going to turn it down to like a really dark brown. I'm going to go ahead and turn the opacity up so we can see it. I'm going to go ahead and select the gradient. And I'm going to invert it. So now it's on the feet. So now we have a 
darker lower area and a lighter upper area for this grade uh, for the gradients and that's a good start for basic gradients that'll be on top of everything almost everything you make in 3d will have some sort of gradient on it like this it's just the sun kisses the top and it's darker down low the eyes used to seeing it okay so the next thing we want to do is start doing like more positional gradients okay so this can be done in multiple ways but let's go back into our scatter because we want it to be confined to the body. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new layer, just albedo. We're gonna keep it white so it's easy to see. Let's go ahead and call this a foot gradient. And we're gonna add a black mask like always. We can always add a, a, a layer here and color it, but you can't change any of the attributes afterwards so it's i always like to use a fill layer and then paint in a mask because you can always go back and edit things um so let's go here let's go here let's go gradient let's go ahead and invert this gradient perfect let's go ahead and turn the intensity up a little so it's a little bit more on the feet and the there we go a little bit more on the feet and the claws which is good. The, this area I want darker. They, they're they used a lot for grab uh, grabbing and walking, uh, so they'll be more calloused. They'll be a little bit darker, which is perfect for me. So let's click here. Let's go ahead and choose what we want. Let's choose a darker, a, a darker color. Perfect. And we will just turn the opacity down. This opacity right here is really good for um, everything. So if I had albedo roughness and like say if I had metal selected, and I want it to be metal. You can see now it's, it looks funny, but if I do this, it takes away the whole layer and that's not necessarily what we want. So what I would do is hit this little chain up here and then if I, whatever I have selected, um, like hit that little chain, whatever I have selected, if it's the uh, albedo channel or if it's the metal channel, uh, whatever channel that I have selected in here, up here, albedo, metal, uh, it'll affect it individually instead of together. But for now, since we're not using metal, we're just using um, just using it as a diffuse editor, we can leave it linked, but just so you all know, perfect. All right, now let's go ahead and add a head gradient. Let's go ahead, let's just duplicate. Let's go ahead and edit this. Let's edit the color to be a little bit more of like a, a like a light pink red color okay perfect let's go back into our gradient and let's uninvert and let's go ahead and let's see let's adjust the intensity let's make that scale one let's go ahead and click the transform and see if we can't move it up a little we don't want it to there we go there. now it's just on the head Let's try an overlay and see how that looks. Does that actually do anything? Not really, no, okay. Let's go to uh, linear. No, not doing anything. I like to play with these and see what each does. So let's go to standard and let's just drop the intensity a little bit. Let's get a little pink up at the head. Um, let's go ahead and try another gradient and call this a wing gradient, wing gradient, okay. Let's go ahead and make this like a lighter orange -er color. Okay. Let's go back here. Let's go to opacity up. Let's go to into our gradient. Let's go ahead and adjust the transforms back to what it was. One. Cool. Let's go into a radial selection. And let's see if we can't, let's see if we can bring this down a little. All right, perfect. And then let's see if we can shift this to one side or the other. Oh, it's not working well. So let's go ahead and let's adjust the scale just a little. Come down just a little. And let's see if we can't see if we can't get this thing to move. Let's turn the intensity down. Let's go back to one. All right, so this is not working as I had planned. If you go with the scale too much, it'll start to duplicate on itself and we don't wanna do that right now. Uh, 
So this, I'm glad when I make mistakes or do something I don't like, it we're able to learn from it. So let's go and hit zero. Let's go ahead and hit zero. Let's go ahead and hit zero. Let's go ahead and invert this. Let's change the color to something we can see a little more, like white. Let's go back in and see if we can get this to behave a little bit better. Transform. Let's try clamp. And let's go ahead and see if we can shift this to one side. Yep, there we go. That worked a little bit better of what we're trying to do. Perfect. So now let's... Let's see, can we shift it forward or back? Oh, that's not playing. Okay, let's go back. Let's choose the color that we want this time. Let's go back here. Let's choose like a, a lighter yellowy color. Just as a base gradient underneath. And let's go ahead and drag this underneath all of those gradients so this darkness comes up. So it, like Photoshop and like Substance, it honors the stack. So now that it's down here, so let's call that wing gradient left. Let's duplicate that. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Let's duplicate that. Let's go back into the gradient and let's see if we can edit the transforms, put a negative in front of here and see if it hops to the other side. Not as well as I would have liked. So let's go ahead and keep. Close that down. All right. All right, so uh, now we have some base gradients on here. Um, I'm actually going to, let's see, can we turn these to overlay? Do they look good? Yeah, overlay is actually pretty nice here. doesn't look like it's working with both of them. There we go. All right, let's turn that down just a little bit. Let's go to like 77, seven, perfect. All right, now we got some base gradient there. Okay, perfect. We got the footprint gradient, we got the head gradient. Let's go ahead and do some manual gradients in here just a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and add a fill layer. That's not what we want. Let's delete that. Make sure we're out of the mask into the layer. We're going to select another one. We want just albedo. Add a black mask. Black mask. Perfect. We're in the paint layer, so now we can uh, technically start painting. So what I want to do is come up here to the top left and hit the paint brush, and then hit tool settings to show you and you can adjust. It's just like uh, Substance, uh, Control and right mouse drag will change the size. So let's go ahead and just get a little bit of adjustment here. There we go, just a little bit, cool. Perfect, that's roughly what we're looking for. We just wanna change the color here just a little bit. And let's go ahead up here at a Mm, here, let's go here. And these are called adjustment layers. And let's put a blur. Let's go ahead and drag the blur just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Now I can come back into the layer and not the mask. And we can adjust here. So let's make this a like a lighter, a little bit of a lighter color. Let's adjust this to overlay. There we go. It's going to get us a little bit lighter because of blood flow. So let's see if we can get a little bit lighter. Perfect. And uh, we can probably honestly go back to the paint layer here, back to the brush, and we can probably honestly paint a little bit onto the ears as well. It's thin and it'll be a little bit lighter in general. So we'll edit that a little bit. But let's get that moving. Perfect. All right, cool. And that looks good. Let's turn down the opacity just a little bit. Click out of here, and we're gonna call this blood rich gradient. I'm gonna go ahead and create another fill layer, add a mask, add a black mask. 
We're gonna go ahead and go up to paint. All right, and we're just gonna paint all of this, just the front of this nose a little bit. There we go. There we go. All right, cool. Just a little bit of adjustment there. Let's make sure you're good. All right, let's come in here. Just click albedo. Uh, we see we're getting a little bit of the seams in here, which I'm not sure why. There we go. So it was just an error, a calculation error, which is fine. Um, you saw the seams in there, they're gone now. So let's go back into the layer. Let's go ahead and choose like a bright pink that we want. So let's give me pink, well, like a red pink. There we go. Let's Let's give me an overlay. Let's see how that looks. Cool. So now we got a little pink there. Good. Uh, we can probably honestly paint a little bit here. It's, uh, actually, I'll put a different color there and that'll be for a later video. All right, so now we have rough gradients in here and we're starting, <coughs> starting to look a little bit like skin. It's re reflecting well with skin. So let's go to scene, render, let's go ray tracing to take a look and see how we're looking. All right, cool. So now you can see that we have the base gradient. So this is just a good base to start from. We have the skin. We chose the acne because it adds some breakup. We'll be adding a lot more breakup in the future. Uh, it gets darker towards here, lighter here, lighter in the blood rich areas, darker on the feet. And it's looking pretty good. This is a good start for us. So, um, pretty quick. Oh, what are we doing here? How did we end up with two texture? Oh, we're, I see what we did here. It's interesting. I must've accidentally, uh, duplicated, duplicated it. Hmm. Okay, cool. Um, just delete that. And now we're here. So sorry about that. It's good to make mistakes. I learn, you learn. Um, so now we, in this video, we've just we've got everything looking correctly. We've established base gradients and a base skin texture. In the next video, we will be doing more skin breakup. So as we sh saw in the first video, we want to establish like a, uh, a more of a purple and yellow uh, monster with some blues and pinks in there. Um, so instead of just choosing a base color that is purple, what we want to do is build that color up through pigmentation. So we will start in the next video doing procedural generation to add different layers of col color on top of the already base gradients that we have and we'll start slowly building the color that we want uh, we'll be procedural for a while eventually we'll get into some hand painting so thank you for stopping by for this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you so much